This time, let's import an OBJ file for the reference mesh. From Files, Open, select PS OBJ Reference Mesh, and then select the file. A new part file is created, and after specifying the units, you are ready to start retopologizing. When surface breakdown is not an issue, quad wrap is a quick solution. But when you need to control edge flow, you will want to draw edges directly onto the reference mesh with Draw Edges. Manually creating the entire mesh may take some time to get the best layout. Because of the small radius of the corners compared to the larger face size, I've also used shrink wrap with four iterations. This method will usually give you the cleanest conversion. Another option is to create the area that requires the flow line manually. Connect the main areas and then autofill the remainder with smart fill. I've got a partial sub D that I've already prepared with my edges tweaked into position. To bring it directly into the current edit session, go to Tools, Power Surfacing, Import to Current Document. Note that you can also replace reference meshes from there as well. Having imported the new faces, the first thing to do is constrain them to the reference mesh. I'm using the right click menu. Switching to Sub D Display and setting the display subdivisions back to 3, you can see the curve produced by the target edge. If you convert at this stage, you can see that you will lose the central edge. Using set boundaries is the key to retaining it. Now the edge is retained on conversion. With Smart Fill, smaller faces will handle the topology better, so I'm going to subdivide my existing faces once. Note that the boundary is retained. I also want to break it into a few smaller areas. I'm using paint faces to do that. And now I'll use my Smart Fill. This time, Shrink Wrap requires less iterations to catch the corners because of the smaller face size. The conversion retains the edge correctly, but the surface breakdown is complicated. If you require specific edge flow and good surface breakdown, you can use a combination of several methods because shrink wrap will provide the final accuracy. Let's get back to the edge definition stage. This time I'll use extend and glue edge groups to fill the spaces. Turning on stop at corners will be useful for edge selection. A non-uniform scale makes a quick alignment. The pushback needs adjustment before I can do the underside. I'll set my boundaries and try a Smart Fill on the back. In this case, I can do a better job manually, so I'll erase and use Insert Edges. Because it's a flat surface, I probably didn't need to do that, but I like a clean mesh. With this face size, you can see how the fourth shrink wrap iteration is required to handle the corner radius. Watch the lower right corner. Conversion shows a nice surface breakdown. It could be better with another boundary. And in case you're curious, this is what the conversion looks like without using boundary to retain the target edge.